Are you looking to buy your first 3D printer? Well, don't spend a cent until you've watched this honest buyer's guide. I've been 3D printing at home now for just under 10 years and boy do I love it. For me, I find it the most rewarding to create a custom part that's just not available to buy. Being able to do this makes my hobby so much better. If that sounds appealing, great, but there are some things you need to know before you get into the game. My intention with this buyer's guide is not so much to recommend specific machines, but rather educate you on how to choose a machine that best suits you. If you're watching this as an old hand at 3D printing, I'm relying on you to leave your best tips in the comment section. For the beginners, we're going to start with the reality check. We're going to start with what people might not tell you about 3D printing. When people think of 3D printing, they think of a magical device where you press a button and the object appears. Kind of like a space age appliance. Well, this microwave is an actual appliance. It might come with a manual, but it's rare that anyone will read it because the functionality is quite simple and intuitive. And here is a 2D printer. It has routines built in so when you add new paper, this will be detected and handled automatically. It might be more complicated than a microwave, but it's still more or less an appliance designed for the masses. Select the document you want, click print, and soon after, it's going to magically appear. You don't really have to understand how it works to use it, and if it needs your attention, it's going to tell you in a pretty straightforward way. Here is a 3D printer in action, and as wondrous as it is, I need to be clear in saying that 3D printers are not user-friendly appliances designed for the masses. The operation of 3D printers is nuanced, and even if everything is working, you're going to learn how to do things like leveling the bed, at least some basics of slicer software, and you should be aware that the average 3D printer needs way more assembly than any other appliance. And if things start to go wrong, you'll need to know how to diagnose problems, and if you happen to have a catastrophic failure, be prepared to roll up your sleeves and get your hands dirty. Now all of this is doable for most people and it's going to vary from printer to printer how much they hold your hand and automate these processes. But the reality is, 3D printing requires a certain level of investment until you're able to gain the knowledge and experience necessary to work efficiently. Because of that, 3D printing just won't be for everyone. Assuming you're not scared off, the next thing you need to ask yourself is if your 3D printer will be used as a tool to make things or is it the hobby itself? The way I see it, this is a spectrum, and where you sit on it will dictate the type of printer that you should buy. A good analogy for this is a car, which some people use as a tool to get from A to B with no other excitement. They just want it to be reliable and be available when they need it. For other people, a car is a hobby. They get just as much satisfaction working on the car and improving it as they do when they actually get out there and drive it. For these people, it's all about the satisfaction of doing things themselves and picking up new skills along the way. There's nothing wrong with either of these positions, but it is important to think about your intentions because it should influence the type of 3D printer that you buy. One more important question. What are your priorities in a 3D printer? Here are some suggested attributes that may or may not be important to you depending on how you want to use the machine. For instance, if you're printing cosplay models or models of your favourite characters, then print quality might be your priority. Whereas others might be focusing on mechanical parts that need to have high precision so they can fit together properly. For some, it's all about printing speed, so their parts are available as soon as possible, whereas others are more patient and care more about how quiet the machine is and whether or not the interface looks nice and is easy to use. Personally, with the objects I print, print quality just needs to be good enough and I care more about the printer being refined, convenient and reliable. Take the time to think about this for yourself as it will be important as you start to gather information from reviews. On my channel, I've got a long playlist with all of my FDM 3D printer reviews, but you shouldn't be limited to the reviews from any one person. I have very rigid guidelines on what I do to test a 3D printer to find its weaknesses, but that doesn't mean what I test will align with your priorities. That's why before you spend money on a 3D printer, you should watch a number of reviews to get as wide a range of perspectives as possible. When I review a 3D printer, I can only review the one sitting in front of me. Maybe I've got a good one, maybe I've got a lemon. That's why it's important to watch multiple reviews so you can build up an idea of the consistent strengths and weaknesses of a machine. Another thing you can do once you have a printer in mind is browse community groups. 
you'll see examples of the machine working really well, but also people having small issues and asking for help. Again, if an issue pops up over and over again, you might be able to identify it as a weakness for that particular printer. Just keep in mind that the people having trouble might be the most vocal, but that might only be because they're beginners. Again, we're looking for trends that tell us more about how the printer performs. Let's start to look at some specific printers organized into categories. Our first tier are budget machines, ranging from sub $200 to around $300 US. These are an ideal way to start for those that want to try 3D printing with minimal financial outlay. These cheaper machines are also great for someone who wants to learn about 3D printing and be a tinkerer, and absolutely perfect for those who want a hobby in improving and upgrading the machine constantly. These budget 3D printers typically have quite decent instructions and minimal steps for assembly. They'll have an i3 style frame, also known as a bed slinger, where the X axis moves from left to right across a gantry, and Y axis motion is provided by moving the bed back and forth. Build volume will likely be 235 by 235 and 250 tall. After you've put in some time to learn the ropes, you will be able to achieve quite good print quality on most of these budget machines. We're not talking best of the best, but we are talking very respectable and functional prints. The undisputed king in this tier is the Creality Ender 3, the cheapest standard edition you can get comfortably under US $200, and then we have the newer V2 heading up towards $300. In this price bracket, you'll find an endless list of clones available that match these same specs. Some of these clones might be slightly better value than others, and others might have one or two extra features, but overall the differences probably won't be that significant. One thing they do share in common is the reason that they're so cheap. And that reason is a lack of quality control. One of the Ender 3s I purchased was missing the knob for the LCD, and it's very common for these printers to have a warped bed, making it hard to get large objects to stick evenly. You might get lucky and receive a perfect budget machine, but the chances are there's going to be bits on it that are loose and need adjustment. Although there might be something in the box talking about after sales service or manufacturer support, realistically this is non-existent and you're going to be relying on community groups for your support needs. If that's okay with you, there's amazing aftermarket support for modding. For Ender 3s and their clones, there is a ridiculous amount of upgrades available. Some of these upgrades are printable and therefore simple and free. Print the part, fit it to the machine and repeat. It's quite satisfying, but it goes a lot further. If you want to add a color touchscreen, you can do that. If you want to change the hot end to print higher temp materials, bolt-on parts are available. If you want to rejig the whole machine to be able to print really large objects, well there's kits available for that too. For most people starting out, a budget 3D printer will be the best option. Next up are the mid-range machines, and the price will vary, somewhere from 300 up to 700 US dollars or even more. And a mid-range machine might be a good match for you if you're after a specific feature. For instance, a printer that's enclosed, or perhaps one that can print two colours at once. However, most of the time, you'll be spending more money to get a larger build volume. And a very common size is 300 by 300 millimeters and 400 millimeters tall. For these mid-tier options, you're more likely to find features such as auto bed leveling, which maps the contours of the bed, making it easier to get objects to stick properly. But despite these ready printers being double or even triple the price, quality control remains an issue. If we look at the reviews for these printers, we can see that most people are happy, but then other people have issues with parts failing. Despite these machines being more expensive, there's still a chance of receiving a lemon with a lack of manufacturer support. It's disappointing, but it is what it is, and my goal is to make sure you have the knowledge you need before you spend any money. If you are looking to avoid the hassle, there are other options. Our next category is manufacturer supported machines, and the price varies quite a lot, from a few hundred up to several thousand. This is what you choose if you want proper customer service and support. In essence, it's for those willing to spend more money for peace of mind. So let's look at some options. One such company is Tiny Machines 3D. They actually sell cheaper Chinese 3D printers, but when you buy them, they've already had the once over and had the firmware upgraded to remove any flaws, and they also have 90 days of included technical support. Furthermore, if you want the printer modified, you can choose that option and have Tiny Machines install and test the parts before they send you the printer. The most popular manufacturer in this space is Prusa, with their current flagship model being the Mark 3 S Plus. 
which you can get as a kit or pay extra to get it fully assembled. On paper, the specs don't seem that different to some of the better mid-range machines, but unless you've used one of these printers, you simply won't understand what you're paying for. Prusa are a company that frequently release firmware updates for their 3D printers, and they always build into the firmware a bunch of wizards and self-check procedures. There's a lot of attention to detail when it comes to quality control and the printer being able to tell you, just like a 2D printer, when it needs attention. Prusa also provide their own slicing software, complete with pre-made profiles for their printers, they stock their own range of filament, and most importantly, they offer 24-7 live chat for support. So far, I've paid for three Prusa printers. Two of them were great, and one of them had some teething issues. So nothing is gonna be perfect, but the difference here was I had proper support to be able to rectify the problems. An American company with a similar emphasis on customer support is Lulzbot. Their printers are intended to be reliable workhorses, starting around a thousand US dollars. Our final category is premium Core XY 3D printer kits. And the price varies a lot, but it's typically around 1500 to 2000 US dollars. These 3D printers are for those that want high performance that comes from a no compromise pursuit of excellence. These 3D printer kits aren't intended for beginners. And if you go this way, you're gonna be part of the bleeding edge of 3D printer development. Some popular kits in this category include those from Voron Designs, Rat Rig, including the V-Core 3, which I've built on this channel. Second, including the SK Tank, which I'm currently building. The K3 from Annex Engineering. And the Hevort. What all of these printers tend to have in common is that they're based on Core XY Kinematics, a lightweight motion system optimized for high speed yet high quality printing. Their build volume is also quite generous, on par with large format bed slingers, and some even going up to 500 by 500 millimeters. The bed is typically supported from multiple positions, the bed can then be probed, and the positions automatically adjusted to get everything square, and they used advanced firmware such as Clipper, which can use an accelerometer to automatically measure resonant frequencies and shape stepper motor movements to print at high speed without any reduction in print quality. There are so many quality options available in this category that we're really spoilt for choice. And the best thing is that much of these advanced features are community driven. If you've been 3D printing for a while and you're looking for an awesome project, I doubt you would be disappointed with any of these Core XY options. Before we finish, a quick mention of some printers we haven't covered. We have Delta 3D printers, which have a completely different shape, which makes them fascinating to watch and gives them a cylindrical build volume. Apart from this, they're pretty comparable with other printers you'll find in the mid-range tier. We have extra large format 3D printers that come with a comparable increase in cost for when you frequently need to print oversized items. And we have Infinite Z belt printers for when you need to print multiple objects with autonomy or really, really long items that just wouldn't fit on the bed of another 3D printer. In other categories, we have those aimed at schools and prosumers, such as those from MakerBot, which start from 5,000 US dollars, and those from Ultimaker, who don't say the price, which probably means if you have to ask, you can't afford it. Let's say you've researched and you've picked out your printer. So what do you do next? I would suggest that knowledge is power, so you should start collecting it. Firstly, join a community group for your type of 3D printer and get learning about what might go wrong and the tweaks you need to get the best performance. Just remember that the search function is your friend. Now, obviously I run a YouTube channel and now's my chance to plug it. If you're new to 3D printing, I have a 3D printing for beginners playlist that will teach you about firmware, slicer settings, how to level your bed, what tools you might like to buy, and how to calibrate your 3D printer to get it performing its best. I also have a free website with a guide to calibrating your printer, troubleshooting procedures, and these pages are designed to complement my videos. There's a lot of great 3D printing channels on YouTube, so look around until you find the ones that you like best. 3D printing can be amazing, so I hope you get into the hobby and I wish you luck finding the right 3D printer for you. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.